Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're going to talk about why and how I use Vim Plug to manage all of my Vim plugins. So not too long ago, someone shot me an email and they were like, yo, Nick, you got into Vim pretty late. It would be pretty interesting on, you know, why you chose to use Vim Plug. And I figured this would be a good opportunity to like combo that and also talk about how I use it to manage all of my Vim plugins as well. But the TLDR and basically why I chose to use this plugin is because it was one of the first plugin managers I tried with Vim and it solved all the problem and pain points I had for managing plugins and uh, it, really, it works really nicely. So June Gun over here is the author of Vim Plug and prior to using Vim, I did use FCF on the command line to do a reverse search on my bash history. And uh, I noticed, and I don't know if you do this, but I definitely do this. When I find someone on GitHub who makes some useful tools, one of the first things I do is I go to their list of repositories and I just take a look to see what other tools they may have made. So when it came time to using Vim, you know, I remember that June Gun did make Vim plug. So that's really the main reason why I started to use it. Now there's other plugin managers too for Vim or package managers, plugin managers, whatever you want to call them. So there's Pathogen made by the legendary T Pope. And it uh, looks like he made this about three plus years ago. And uh, you know, if you use this plugin manager, I'm sure it's completely fine. And uh, there's another one to Vundle. And if you take a look here at the first commit for the license file, this is way back in February uh, 2012, so eight years ago. You know, way back then I was probably still using Sublime Text. You know, Vim wasn't even like something I was thinking about using. Now, if you're using Vundle or you're using Pathogen or you're using other options, then there's really no reason to switch if it's working really nicely for you. It just so happens that, uh, you know, I tried Vim Plug. I had no, no complaints about it at all and I did everything I wanted to do. So that's basically why I use it. So now let's take a look here at uh, my vimrc file. And by the way, I think if you run H packages, uh, you know, if you're using vim8 or above, it does come with its own package manager as well. So if you wanted to read the help for that, you can go and check that out. But uh, you know, I really don't have an opinion on it other than I have not tried using it. I understand that maybe like the high level, you just throw stuff in a certain directory, maybe Git repos and, and things like that, and Vim will potentially pick that up. But I don't know how it really handles like updating plugins and stuff like that. But in this video, we are gonna go over, you know, updating some plugins for Vim because that's not something I've done for a couple of weeks now. And I figured, hey, might as well do it on video. But before we get into that, uh, take a look here on uh, this line over here where we have this call for plug begin. This is basically how you start defining your plugins. So using Vim plug, and you can see below this line, I have a whole bunch of different plugins here, right? There's like about 40, maybe even 50 of them at this point. And at the very end here, we have this other function called to plug end. And that basically defines, you know, where we're done installing or defining where our plugs are. Now, you know, this video is not going to be like a, an introduction to installing Vim plug. You know, I guess I, I failed to mention that, but you know, if you go to the repo on GitHub, there is installation links on, you know, how you can install it on various different operating systems, various different ways. Uh, from what I remember, yeah, I just like get cloned it and it's in my home directory under Vim plugged. And uh, yeah, the readme file will get you set up if you want to do it. So one really cool thing about Vim plug that I like is the way you just reference them here. And, and perhaps this is how you use it with other Vim plugin managers as well. But it's like you just grab the uh, GitHub username along with the repo, and that just becomes like what you put after the plug uh, definition here. And that's all you need to do to define it. So yeah, it's just very nice to go to someone's like GitHub repo, copy just that part, paste it in, and then it's like, boom, done. So the way you actually do the installation is you run, you know, after you install Vim plug, you have all these different like plug commands that you can run. So there is this one command here called Vim install or plug install, sorry. And after you define, you know, your new items here, you just run plug and install. And, you know, moments later, you know, things will be installed. But I'm not installing any new plugins for this video, but what I will do is I will run a plug update. And what this does is, so unlike most other editors, and before I run this, we'll do a little aside here. So, you know, Vim is just not going to like magically update all of your plugins for you behind the scenes. And I actually think that is a great, great, great feature of Vim. Because when you're like a professional developer, right? Like I do a lot of freelance work and I'm working on people's projects and there's deadlines and things like that. 
you know, I want to be in absolute, absolute total control from when my editor and plugin versions get updated. You know, I don't just want to turn my computer on or reboot or whatever, and then like restart Vim and then suddenly like, you know, these 50 plugins have been auto updated. So I really like the power or flexibility of, or having the option to do the updates when I'm comfortable doing them. So right now let's go ahead and just run a plug update here. Uh, and you can see it's very fast. This, I have 49 plugins and we can see this thing running and you know, it just updated all of them now. So that is pretty, pretty cool. And uh, you know, things are happening in the background here because I do have a markdown preview one that depends on having node installed. So that's what was going on there. And uh, before I even touch anything on the keyboard here, take a look there on the bottom right where it says like press capital R to retry. It looks like for whatever reason, the Nginx Vim one didn't get uh, updated. I've actually never seen that before. So maybe there's like some, uh, like what does it say? Refusing to merge unrelated histories. Yeah, I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, let's ignore that for now. And uh, take a look at the other message it says on the bottom, which is press capital D to see the updated changes. So you can just hit capital D. And what this is, this is like really, really cool. So for every single plugin that I have installed now, it shows all sorts of like git commits for every single one. And you know, you can go through this list and you can see, well, it went away now, but in the status bar, uh, it had it said like press capital X if you just want to revert that commit. So what's really, really cool about this, and let me just zoom in on this window here, is uh, you know, we have all of the you know, the commits that change for each plugin and also like the relative time of when these things were added, like two days ago, nine days ago or whatever. You can see that, you know, some of these happened minutes ago or hours ago, which is pretty cool. And uh, if you take a look here at like Nerdtree, lots of things happen there, you know, and, you know, if you are really sensitive about like, you know, what new features are in the plugins that you have and you really wanted to know about the gory details, you can just get a full list here and you're basically you're good to go. Like you almost don't even need to read like the change log or something like that, unless you wanted to go for like a high level thing. So now it's like, I'm just gonna quit out of uh, Vim now, but it's like, yeah, at this point, my plugins have been updated. So everything is good to go. So if you don't want to keep a plugin installed, what you could do with Vim plug two is like, let's say you didn't want, uh, you know, T Pope's Vim obsession anymore. You could just delete it. You know, you can comment it out, whatever you'd like to do. And then you can run this other plug command, which is called plug clean. And that's gonna go through all of your um, plugins that were downloaded because they're all gonna be downloaded over here in this home directory .vim plug directory. And it's gonna, you know, go through all the definitions that you have here and compare to what you have on disk. And the ones that don't exist here inside of your vimrc file, you know, you'll get a prompt to where you can just delete them. Now, I'm not gonna be uninstalling any plugins here, so we won't really get to see the action of that work. But I mean, like you literally just run plug clean when you're, you know, remove or comment out a plugin and uh, you're done. Like there's no pain and uh, it's great. So yeah, I mean, that's basically why I use uh, Vim plug. It has never given me any trouble. Uh, it works really well. I have full control over being able to update plugins. Um, it's super easy, as you can see, to manage your plugins, like installing them, uninstalling them, updating them when you want. And you get those really fantastic outputs to where you can see git diffs or, you know, commit logs for all of these uh, plugins that you have. And if you have, you know, 40 plugins or 50 plugins, you know, it's really nice seeing that because if something breaks down the line, like, you know, two days after you install things, you can go and, and hunt that stuff down. So, yeah, I mean, this is a quick video. Uh, I really do like this plugin manager a lot. Again, you don't need to switch with it if it would, you know, if you're working with something else and it works. But uh, for me, I'm gonna stick with Vimplug. And uh, with that said, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video, please drop in a like. And uh, if you have any questions about Vimplug, just uh, hit me up in the comments and I'll do my best to answer every single one of them. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.